Thank you for joining me over this most auspicious season. Tonight we have three short stories all surrounding that most fearful of nights, Halloween. The Haunting Hourglass. Halloween had always been my favorite holiday. The air was thick with anticipation and I reveled in the thrill of the unknown. But this year, the unknown became terrifyingly real. It started when I found an old hourglass at an estate sale. Its sand shimmered in hues of orange and black, capturing the essence of Halloween. Curiously, a note was attached, turn only on All Hallows Eve. Of course, I dismissed the warning as a gimmick. It was only October 15th, but the allure was too strong. I flipped the hourglass, watching the sand slip away. That night, I had a disturbing dream. I was trapped in a room with no doors, and the walls were inching closer, threatening to crush me. I awoke in a cold sweat, dismissing the nightmare as a product of my overactive imagination. As days passed, the dreams grew darker, more vivid. Each night, I found myself in different, terrifying scenarios. Once, I was being chased by faceless spectres. Another time, I stood at the edge of a cliff with shadowy hands pushing me closer to the edge. On the eve of Halloween, I decided to confide in my friend Clara about the dreams. She's a firm believer in the supernatural, and I hoped she'd offer some insight. When I showed her the hourglass, her face turned ashen. You shouldn't have turned it before Halloween, she whispered. Legends speak of an hourglass that binds one's fate. Turning it prematurely invites the spirits to haunt your dreams until Halloween. The weight of her words sank in. Is there a way to break the curse? I asked desperately. Turn it again on Halloween at the stroke of midnight, she replied. But be warned, if you miss the exact moment, the spirits will claim you. Halloween night arrived, and I anxiously awaited midnight. I held the hourglass tightly, watching the seconds tick by on the clock. 11.59 p.m. My heart raced. Just as the clock struck 12, I flipped the hourglass. Suddenly the room chilled and the lights flickered. Whispers echoed around me, growing louder and more frantic. Shadows danced on the walls, forming grotesque shapes. Then. As abruptly as it started, the room fell silent. The hourglass lay still, its sands frozen in time. Clara's words rang in my ears. Had I successfully broken the curse, or had the spirits claimed me? The house felt different, darker, more oppressive. But as the days passed, the nightmares ceased. Every year since, on Halloween, I'm reminded of that fateful night. The hourglass sits on my mantle, untouched, but sometimes, when the clock strikes midnight, I swear I hear the faintest whisper, reminding me of the spirits I narrowly escaped. The Midnight Snare The atmosphere on Halloween night was always eerie in our small town. Growing up, I'd heard tales of the Midnight Snare, a supernatural trap said to capture souls, but I'd dismissed them as mere myths. As I aged, those tales faded into the recesses of my mind, that was until last Halloween. I decided to throw a Halloween party at my old family mansion. The house with its creaky wooden floors and cobwebbed chandeliers provided the perfect setting. Friends, dressed in an array of costumes, danced and laughed, filling the halls with revelry. As midnight approached, I decided to take a break and ventured to the attic, a place I hadn't been in years. Dust hung in the air, and the only light came from the full moon filtering through a cracked window. As I walked, a rusty old bear trap in the corner caught my attention. It seemed out of place, but I attributed it to some forgotten relic of the past. Suddenly, a chill ran down my spine, the room's temperature plummeted, and an eerie silence enveloped the attic. The trap started vibrating softly, then began floating in mid-air, glowing with a sinister light. To my horror, it began to expand, turning into a large, ethereal net. Panicking, I tried to flee, but my feet felt glued to the floor. The net raced towards me, ensnaring me in its grip. A cold sensation washed over me, and I felt my consciousness being pulled into the depths of the trap. Memories of the midnight snare legend flooded back, 
souls captured at the stroke of midnight on Halloween would be condemned to eternal torment. Suddenly, I was no longer in the attic, but in a dark, endless void. Faces of people I recognized, some from old family photos, floated around, their expressions frozen in terror. They were the victims of past Halloweens, and I realized with dread that I was now one of them. Time had no meaning in this place. It felt like both an eternity and mere moments before I was jolted back to reality. The attic came into focus, and the ethereal net released its grip. I stumbled backward, gasping for air. The rusty bear trap lay innocently in the corner as if nothing had happened. Rushing downstairs, I found the party in full swing, but something was off. Everyone stared at me with vacant eyes, their expressions a mix of fear and recognition. To my horror, I realized that they could see the souls of the past victims, now attached to me, floating around like a spectral entourage. The clock chimed, signaling the end of Halloween, but the terror had just begun. A voice whispered in my ear, you are the keeper of the snare now. I understood that I was bound to the curse, destined to lure souls every Halloween. The next year, as October 31st approached, the urge to throw another party became irresistible. Friends and strangers arrived, but this time I was no longer a mere host. At the stroke of midnight, the attic beckoned and the supernatural trap claimed more souls with me as its conduit. Every Halloween, the cycle repeats. The number of spectral souls attached to me grows and my descent into madness deepens. The town now whispers about the cursed mansion and its unholy host, but the allure of the party remains irresistible to many. I pen this as a warning, but also as an invitation. This Halloween, if you dare, come to the mansion. Join the revelry, dance and laugh. But remember, when the clock strikes midnight, the midnight snare awaits. Whispers of the Hollowed Eve Every year on Halloween, I was drawn to the abandoned house at the end of Maple Street. The old legends spoke of it being cursed, but to a curious teenager, it was a tempting adventure. This Halloween, I finally mustered the courage to enter. The twilight sky cast eerie shadows as I hesitantly stepped onto the creaky porch. The door, strangely ajar, beckoned me in. Inside, the air was cold and thick with an ancient scent. Dust danced in the faint light, revealing a room with vintage furniture covered in white sheets. In the center, there was an old gramophone. Drawn to it, I cranked the handle and a slow, haunting tune began to play. As the melody enveloped the room, the temperature dropped further. My breath became visible in the chilling air. Suddenly, whispers filled the room. Why have you come? They hissed. I froze, scanning the room for the source, but saw nothing. The whispers grew louder, more frantic, as if a chorus of lost souls cried out in unison. Panic surged within me, and I dashed for the door, but it wouldn't budge. I was trapped. The sheets began to rustle, slowly rising. Beneath them were not furniture, but figures, ghostly apparitions with hollow eyes reaching out for me. The whispers grew deafening, and the gramophone's tune now sounded like a funeral dirge. In a desperate attempt, I shouted, What do you want? The room grew silent. One of the apparitions, a little girl with a tattered dress, stepped forward. To be remembered, she whispered. Understanding dawned on me. This wasn't just an abandoned house, it was a forgotten mausoleum of souls lost to time. Gathering my courage, I spoke. Tell me your stories, and I promise to share them. The atmosphere lightened. One by one, they shared tales of their lives, their dreams, and their untimely ends. As dawn approached, the spirits faded, leaving me alone with their memories. I left the house, not with fear, but with a newfound purpose. Every Halloween since, I've shared their stories, ensuring they are never forgotten again. V. Once again, thank you for joining me. I do hope you enjoyed my stories. Please leave a comment, like and subscribe. It is very much appreciated.